thank you for joining me to talk about ratio analysis. I'm sorry I can't be with you. Uh, there are wind chimes outside my window, so you may have a somewhat zen experience as they clang in the wind. Uh, so I apologize up front, or maybe you enjoy it. So let's turn and look at some of the ratios. First, uh, there are major types of ratios that are used to analyze uh, fi financial statements performance, and they include liquidity ratio, activity ratios, profitability ratios, and coverage ratios. And we're going to look at each of these in a little bit more depth. The first type is liquidity, and liquidity ratios, as you can see, focuses in on current assets and current liabilities. And it's looking at um, the ability of the company to use its current resources to meet its current responsibilities. So the current ratio is the old standard, and we generally like that current ratio to be above two. In other words, having twice as many current um, assets or resources as we do current uh, liabilities or responsibilities. Uh, coming off of that is the quick or the acid test ratio and the difference between the current ratio and the quick or acid test is the quick or acid test does not include inventory or prepaids. So it excludes inventory and prepaids because generally uh, they're a little bit slower uh, to generate cash. You have to wait on a third party in order to generate cash. So the quick ratio or acid test we like above one. The third one here is current cash debt coverage and it's looking at your cash flow statement and your cash flow from operations and seeing if it is more than adequate to cover your current liabilities. The second set of ratios have to do with the activity, and they're looking at the quality of different assets. So receivables turnover ratio is net sales over average trade receivables. And you'll remember an average is beginning of the year plus end of the year divided by two. And you'll get a number. And so receivable turnover number tells you basically how many times during the year do your receivables refresh themselves? In other words, how many times do you get a new set of receivables? Is it five times a year, six times a year, 12 times a year? Uh, for many analysts, that doesn't say a whole lot, and they like to take that ratio and divide it into 365. And that will give you days sales or days receivables. So you'll see over here that if I do 365 divided by the receivable turnover, you get the number of days it takes from the time of sale until the customer pays. And so that, that's giving you the lifespan of a receivable, which to many people is more um, meaningful. Likewise, for inventory, you can decide how many times a year the inventory shelves need to be restocked. In other words, the inventory turnover, which gives you the number. Is it 5, 6, or 10? Um, and then you can also look at the shelf life. So if you take 365 divided by the inventory turnover, you get the number of days inventory stays on the shelves. And then the overall uh, asset turnover ratio basically is looking at the efficiency of how well do you use your assets or resources to generate sales. Profitability ratios have everything to do with the income statement. And you'll see that we get percentages here. So the profit margin on sales or the profit margin ratio is comparing the bottom line of the income statement with the top line of the income statement to get a percentage. Also, you can do a rate of return on assets, which is looking at the net income, which is your return, over your average total assets to see how well are you using your assets to generate uh, profits. Also, you can look at that from a shareholder's 
standpoint in ratio 9, or rate of return on common stock equity, also known as return on shareholders equity or return on common shareholders equity, where you're looking at the net income after paying the dividends over the average stockholders equity, beginning of the year plus end of the year divide by 2. That ratio will always be higher than the return, rate of return on assets. Why? Because the denominator is smaller. Earnings per share uh, is the net income minus the preferred dividends. In other words, the, dividend, the earnings available to your common shareholders over the weighted shares of outstanding common stock. So that's kind of telling a shareholder uh, what is their share of the profits if they own one share of stock. P.E. ratio or price earnings ratio is looking at the market price, what the stock price is, versus what is the earnings on that stock. The higher the P.E. ratio is, the more risky generally the stock is, or the more um, uh, emotional the stock is. Um, and finally here, payout ratio is looking at what kind of cash dividends are being paid versus what is the net income. So does the company pay out a lot of its uh, net income and dividends or does it not pay out very much? And finally, coverage. Coverage has to do with how well a company is meeting its responsibilities, meaning either its uh, short-term liabilities or its long-term liabilities. So you can see that debt to total assets is looking at the total debts or like total liabilities over total assets and that will give you a percentage or another way to look at it is debt to equity where you're looking at the total liabilities, uh, in other words, your responsibilities to uh, creditors over total shareholders' equity, which are your responsibilities to your shareholders. And you know that if the debt to equity is greater than one, greater than one, then uh, we're in leverage situation because we're using other people's money, our liabilities, uh, to run our business, whereas if it's less than one, then we're not leveraged. And so you may remember that about debt to equity. Times interest earned is just a quick measure of can you make your interest payments and how many times over can you make them. Uh, cash debt coverage ratio, again, is looking at your cash flow statement, your cash flow from operations, and seeing if that cash generation is adequate to pay your average total liabilities all in one year. Book value is looking at the common shareholder's equity over outstanding shares. In other words, if the company was liquidated today, uh, what would each share receive? And finally, free cash flow. Well, after you have your net cash from operating activities and met your current obligations, uh, subtract out your capital expenditures, which are the property, plant, and equipment generally, or other types of capital commitments that you're making, and also subtract out your um, dividends that you promised, and is there any free cash or cash left over to do other things. The last thing I want to leave, with, leave you with is the template of what does an annual report look like, and you know that these are the various um, pieces of an annual report that you would always see in an annual report. Now if you um, don't want to look at it with pretty pictures, you can also look at the 10K, which is what must be filed if you're a publicly traded company every year with the Securities and Exchange Commission, and it uh, gives you the same types of information. So now what we're going to do is apply all of this information to three problems.